Hi, this is Kim Kohler from Emerging Creatively Tutorials, and this is ECT TV, episode 62. So, I am really excited to share with you the video tutorial for today. It is one of my most popular tutorials on my blog, but I haven't done a free video tutorial on it yet. So the tutorial is my wire wrapped rose ring and people love this ring and I love it too. It's super cute, it's not that difficult and it only takes wire and a few tools. So let's just get to it. I'll first show you what you're going to need but I want to discuss the wire first of all. So here I have two different examples of this ring. This is using 18 gauge wire and this is using 20 gauge wire. So you can see there's a significant difference between um, how large the ring looks when it's done. This one is super cute and dainty. This is also super cute, <laughs> but it's, it's bigger. So I'm going to be showing you with 18 gauge wire and you'll be able to see that better anyway. And um, you can decide how you want to do it. You might want to try it both ways. So here we go. So as I mentioned, you'll need uh, wire. This is 18 gauge, half hard, round wire, and you can choose to use 20 gauge, half hard, um, round wire if you prefer. You'll need wire cutters, you'll need chain nose or flat nose pliers, um, just anything that you feel comfortable with that has a nice flat inside. And then you'll need my secret tool, the serrated pliers, which they do have a teeth. You can get this at any hardware store, um, and it doesn't have to be, these are just kind of small ones. You, there are, I've seen people use much bigger ones. If you have a pair in your house already, just use what you have. And then of course you'll need a ring mandrel. Um, this one's metal, um, this one's plastic. Either one is perfectly fine. So we are going to start this ring by cutting off a piece of wire. Um, I usually eyeball this, which is why I already cut it because I wanted to cut it and measure it. This is about 18 inches long. It kind of depends upon how large of a ring you're making, how much wire um, you'll need. So. I'm giving you a general idea, and to be honest, I have large fingers, <laughs> and I typically make rings to fit kind of my, my thumb or like my bigger fingers, so this is probably a larger amount of wire if you're making a large ring. However, I wanted to say this one thing, it's so much better to have too much wire than not enough. If you don't have enough wire, you are going to have to start your ring completely over again, and then you waste all the wire. If you have too much wire, you might just have to cut off an inch or two, and that's not quite a big as a deal. If you're using sterling silver, you can collect those silver pieces and save them to recycle them, and you can even get paid for those pieces, so save them. And if you are not using sterling silver and you're just kind of using a copper or base metal or whatever you want to use, um, then it's just think of it as you are practicing and learning something new, and um, that's just part of it. So about 18 inches is the way to start. So now you're going to get your ring mandrel and you're going to find the size you want to make of your ring on this ring mandrel. And then you're going to wrap around a size larger than that. And then we're going to wrap around a few times. Okay, and now we're going to pull this all tightly and go up to the half size larger. So um, I just want to show you, I have four wires showing in the back, so that's what it's called, showing in the back. Um, so I can count actually four wires. You want to make sure these are not twisted. Um, when you started wrapping, some of them kind of, 
tends to get twisted um, until you get used to making rings. So just make sure they're not twisted. You can just take your fingernail and untwist them if they are twisted. And then, um, so then kind of pull everything close together. And these are going to twist in front of each other, right? For right now, we're just holding them kind of side by side. And then pulling everything together and going the half size larger than what you want to make. And I've already gone way up above where I wanted to go. So I'm just pulling this back down and we're holding everything tight, holding tight against here. And now we're just going to make a twist. So just twist all the way around these two loose ends you have. So we've done it once and now we're going to do it a few more times. So as you can see, I've twisted around a few times on this ring um, and on this ring, both of them. And this, you really can go as many times as you want, but basically what we're going to do is every time you go around, you're going underneath the twist you made before. So I'm taking this wire and going underneath the wire ahead of it and you just sort of keep going around. Um, now, if you're using both your hands and you have your ring mandrel secure, you can actually do this at the same time. Um, I'm showing you one at a time because I'm actually holding my ring mandrel. And if that's what you're doing, this is kind of what you have to do. So you kind of would go halfway around and then halfway around. And you just keep going under the wrap you made before. And I'm not telling you how many times to go around because you can really decide how you want your rose, kind of your rose bud to look. So when you're happy, uh, make sure your wires end at um, each side. You have one going either way. And then carefully pull it off your ring mandrel. And then you're just going to take the wire kind of go underneath that last wrap, make sure it's under there, and then we're going to push the wire in through the ring band and pull it out the other side. I twisted that around while I was showing you, um, but so that ended up going that way, and this one should go the other way. So again, just make sure that final wrap is underneath that final one. And you can just push this through. And if you're making a smaller ring and your finger's bigger, um, you can just grab your your um, regular chain nose pliers, the one without teeth, to kind of help you pull it through. Okay, so now you have these wires going each way. And you just slide this back down on your ring mandrel. Push it down as far as it will go. And now grab your serrated chain nose pliers. So these are the ones with the teeth, and this is where it's very handy to have them um, because they hold onto the wire really well and you can get a really tight wrap. So, but you want to hold the wire only by the very ends because these are going to make a mark on your wire. Um, so you only want to hold it by the end so you can clip off the end. So kind of grab the end and pull as tightly as you can down. So the wrap kind of went around and down under here. And now we're just pulling it securely and then pulling it back up. So now it's going across the band. And while you're doing this, please be very careful. If you pull very hard, um, you could break their wire. It happens all the time. So be very, very careful. Um, you should be wearing goggles even. Um, so I just want you to be aware. Um, if you're pulling hard, you could break the wire. Your tool could slip. Any number of things could happen and you could hurt yourself. You know, the, the tool could come into you. Um, oh gosh, if it went into your eye, it would be horrible. So just be very aware of what you're doing when you're doing it. So now, so we got, we've done one side. You pull this off your ring mandrel, slide it, flip it, so let me show you that again. 
I don't feel like that was in camera. This is how it was. We did this side. I'm pulling this off, flipping it over, and putting it back down as far as it will go um, so that the other side that we didn't actually pull tightly, now that is the side that's coming down. So we're going to do exactly the same thing. Pull as hard as we can and then twist it back up. And you'll find you'll put a little bend in the end. It's okay. We're going to cut that part off. Um, and you can see, I think I probably don't quite have enough wire here, um, but it's going to be tight, but it will be okay. So I'm making a size 10 ring. So if you're making a size 10 ring, you might want to have a little more than 18 <laughs> inches of wire. Um, but if you're making a size 10 or, you know, smaller size, size 9, say something, then it would be perfect. Okay, so now we're going to take this back off the mandrel. And then we're just going to do what we just did again. So we're going to poke the wire through the band and up around. And we're going to do this two more times. So we're making a wrap on the side of that little rosebud. So I'm going around two times, two, two additional times. So there'll be three wraps here. And then the other side too. And like I said, um, my wire is maybe a little bit too short. It's going to be too short. So what I'm going to do is just do two wraps on the side. So I'm going to unwrap one of these. Um, but if you had enough wire, then you could do it again. and pull as tightly as you can down and then pulling it back up this off flipping it over and putting it back down as far as it will go um, so that the other side that we didn't actually pull tightly now that is the side that's coming down so we're going to do exactly the same thing pull as hard as we can and then twist it back up now, if at this point um, you notice that your wraps that are around the bands, so these ones that are going this way, are not close together, I have a simple solution for you. Um, you just take your chain is pliers. These are the regular ones. These do not have the teeth. They're the flat jewelry chain is pliers or flat nose. And you're just going to pinch them together, pinch the wraps together. Um, and then they're nice and close together. You can do it on either side if you need to. Um, or if you wrapped perfectly, you don't have to do that. <laughs> okay, so now our ring is basically done. We just need to cut off the excess wire. So I like to cut the wire so that this last wrap ends in the middle of this band. You don't want it to come around on the inside because you don't want it to scratch your finger when you put on your ring. So you want to end it kind of right in the middle. And you want to do a flush cut. Um, so if you don't know what that is, um, and you have your wire cutters, there's two sides. There's a flat side. There's a concave side. I always kind of think of this is the front. This is the back. Um, and you want to use the flat side toward what you're cutting um, and that will make a nice flush cut so um, sometimes you have to pull this just up a little bit and especially if you're using 18 gauge wire because um, the wire is really thick we're gonna poke that back down in a second so don't worry too much about it and then do the other side and then you take the ring back off again and grab your chain nose pliers again. These are the ones without teeth. These are the jewelry ones, the ones that are flat on the inside. And then you're just gonna push down that that piece. Make sure that it doesn't poke up at all. And that is your ring. So here are a few samples I made. Again, this is what I showed at the beginning with the 20 gauge. These are both 18 gauge. 
different ways you can um, sort of customize this ring is to use a different wire. So maybe you'd want to try a copper or brass um, wire. You might want to try gold even if you're feeling adventurous. Um, you might want to try a different gauge. So I told you the difference between kind of the 18 and the 20 gauge wire. Um, you can do different amounts of the wraps around. These, both these rings have different amounts. Um, you can see this one, I don't know if you can tell, goes up a little higher. So I wrapped more and as you wrap down underneath um, the, the wire, it, the inside wire kind of goes up further. So you can kind of see the difference there. You might want kind of a flatter one, or you might want one that's up higher. Um, you might want a tiny little teeny dainty one with a thinner wire, um, 20 gauge wire. So those are some options for you. So have fun. So wasn't that fun? If you liked the wire wrapped rose ring, you're going to love rings every day month. Rings Every Day Month has two different versions. There's a free version, um, which you sign up for my newsletter and I send you an email every day reminding you to make a ring and giving you inspiration. The paid version, you get a tutorial every single day, a ring tutorial, a different one every day. Um, sometimes they're videos, sometimes they're PDF, sometimes you get both a video and a PDF for certain tutorials. And it all starts on April 1st. I only run it during April. Last year was a blast. This year is going to be two. Um, if you have previously purchased the e-course for Rings Every Day Month, you do not need to purchase it again. You will be invited to join in again for free. And um, if you haven't tried it out and you're not really sure, then come on over to the, the page, the sales page. It tells you all about all the details. And you can sign up there and learn more about the differences between the paid and the free version and what you're going to learn. So um, I hope you have a great couple of weeks and I will see you soon.